Hello and welcome to part two, I guess, of our customizing your MacBook video because you guys seem to really enjoy the first video and as someone who is obsessed with customizing and really just personalizing the whole MacBook experience, I still have so many things to share with you guys. So we are diving right back into it with 20 more ways to customize your MacBook. And if you haven't seen the first video, I actually recommend watching that one first, especially if you want more of a walkthrough, like a step-by-step -step guide on how to customize your MacBook from scratch. Like literally from the moment you unbox it, turn it on for the first time, it'll all be there. So I'll have that video linked below. And also huge thank you to RoboForm for sponsoring this video, more about them later, but now, Let's get right into it. Okay, we are in. This is what my desktop currently looks like. Yes, it is a complete 180 from when you last saw it. So right now I have more of like a planner style desktop. And honestly, I used to find these kinds of desktops really cheesy. Since graduating university, I just noticed that I no longer reach for my physical planner, which was an issue for a little bit. So I decided to migrate my physical planner into my desktop window and it has been working really great for me. Okay, so our first few customizations are regarding how I got to this desktop layout. So the first component, of course, is the wallpaper. Now, I know that wallpapers are a little bit of a, a little bit of a touchy subject on this channel, um, I was shocked, shocked at how many of you guys took offense to me purchasing wallpapers in my last video. I felt all your disappointment. So I am pleased to let you know that I have not purchased a digital image since and I made this wallpaper myself on Photoshop. It took me an embarrassing amount of time. And then for the background, like these little heart eyes here, I took inspo from Pinterest and then I drew them myself on Procreate and then kind of just, you know, spent some time rearranging stuff and putting things together. And this is what it looks like now. If you want this wallpaper too, you can purchase it below. Just kidding. Don't click out. I'll have a link that you can download it for free below. Don't worry, girl, I got you. So the next component are the folders, which are all here on the right side. We have eight folders. So I already showed you guys in the last video how I customize my folders, but just really quickly in case some of you guys are new or if you forgot, all you have to do is open up the PNG that you wanna use as your icon, right click on the folder, get info, copy the PNG, and then paste it on this little blue icon and voila, there it is. And of course, I photoshopped some new icons to match the aesthetic. And yes, they will be downloadable below. Moving on to the left-hand side, we have these four icons here that look like folders, but they're actually not. These are actually website shortcuts. So if I click this one, it'll lead me to Pinterest. I just love website shortcuts because it directs you to a website without you even having to open up Chrome or type the website in the address bar. Again, just increases efficiency. To create a website shortcut, just go on the website you want to make a shortcut for, click on the little lock icon and drag it to your desktop. So I always knew that website shortcuts existed. However, I didn't know that you could customize them like you could folders. To change the icon, similar. Get info, paste the PNG, and there it is. I love it. I love how cohesive everything looks. Now, since this is a planner style desktop layout, of course, a super important component are the sticky notes. So I am a to-do list girl. So we have three sections here, one for school, one for YouTube, and then one just for my general to-do list. And then I just put one post-it note per section. The app that I'm currently using for my sticky notes is called Memo. I love this one because I think it's the most aesthetically pleasing and girl, trust me, okay, because I have tried every single sticky note app out there. Well, every single free one at least. And this is truly the most aesthetically pleasing one. I love how the corners are rounded. I love the font. I love how it's kind of transparent there. And you can change the color. There we have yellow, orange, red, purple. And I just got really lucky that I think the colors look really good with the rectangle 
colors that I chose. However, the only really annoying thing about this app is every so often a pop-up will just appear asking you to upgrade to the premium version, which of course I have no plans of doing because we're all about free apps and extensions here. So that's the only main issue. So another app that I recommend is Stickies. So Stickies is great because no pop-ups. However, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as Memo. There, side by side, you can see. So, you know, pick your battles. Either way, I think these are two of the best sticky notes apps out there. We're going back to the desktop in a little bit, but now let's jump into Chrome. So I have always used Chrome on my MacBook, like literally ever since the first MacBook that I had and possible hot take, but I don't get people who use Safari on their MacBooks. I just think that Chrome is way more customizable. You have the Chrome store and literally everything is there. And I wanted to add a little Chrome section to this customization video because personally, whenever I'm on my MacBook, like. 80% of the time I'm on Chrome. So to me, like customizing my Chrome is just as important as customizing my actual MacBook, if that makes any sense. So how do we customize Chrome? First of course is the theme. So just go on the Chrome web store, click themes, and there are literally so many to choose from. Now let's see, okay, we have this one. This one looks really cute, Artemis. We have some simple ones. Like this is more my vibe when it comes to themes. Girl, I remember in middle school, like whenever I was in class, I would be searching for themes and oh my gosh, wait, hold on. My ultimate favorite theme was this Kath Kidston one. Let me just check if it's still here. Oh my gosh, it is literally this one. Girl, this theme, when I found this, I thought I had struck gold. This theme had me in a chokehold, which I do not understand because it literally looks like a grandma's couch. Point is, I've always loved um, customizing my Chrome theme, especially now because I switch between, I think four, yeah, four different Chrome profiles. So themes just allow me to distinguish them immediately. Going back to the main page, another great way to customize your Chrome is through extensions. Now girl, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you will know that I am crazy obsessed with extensions. I just think that like most people aren't fully maximizing like the potential of a Chrome window that you can achieve through extensions. Now I'm gonna show you my current absolute must have favorite essential Chrome extensions. The first is RoboForm. So RoboForm is a password manager. And girl, if you're like me and you have at least um, 75 accounts on the internet, this is gonna be a game changer. I used to struggle a lot with managing my passwords, so much so that I would either A, have to constantly reset my password, and we all know how much of a hassle that is, or B, use the same password for one too many websites. And we all know that that is one of the worst things you can do. That is why RoboForm has been such an essential for me because instead of having to memorize like a hundred passwords, I just have to memorize one, the master key. Don't worry, RoboForm stores your passwords super securely. It's all encrypted. Like look, it's used by over 600,000 users on Chrome alone. So you know it's trusted. It logs you in automatically and even generates strong and unique passwords. And all you have to do is download it as an extension. But what I love the most is RoboForm Everywhere, which allows you to sync passwords across browsers, devices, and even Chrome users. Thanks to RoboForm Everywhere, I get to sync my passwords and automatically log in, whether I'm using Chrome, Safari, my MacBook, iPad, or iPhone. And great news, you can try RoboForm Everywhere for 30% off by clicking the link in the description box below. The next extension is Go Full Page, which is an extension that takes a screenshot of the entire page, so you don't have to screenshot, scroll, screenshot, scroll, screenshot, and have your whole desktop be filled with screenshots. This one does it all for you and it saves it in a PDF. It's so convenient. And surprisingly, I use this one quite a lot. Out of all the many, many, many extensions I used back in university, one of the only ones that I still find useful today is Checker Plus for Gmail, which basically lets you know when people have read your email. It also tells you how many times they've opened it, what time they opened it, and even the location sometimes because believe it or not, even after university, 
people will still ignore your emails. So this is still an essential. Actually, picture in picture is another extension I still use today because I still love to multitask. If you click this, it minimizes your YouTube video and makes it a floating window and you can resize it, move it around. Okay, side note, is anyone else into Never Have I Ever? I don't know what it is about this show. Like it's definitely not my favorite. It doesn't even make, I'd say my top 20 list, but for some reason I need to watch it. Season three just came out and I literally finished it in a day, a single day. Another YouTube extension I've been currently loving is called Turn Off the Lights. If you click this, it basically dims the rest of the screen so you can focus on the video. These next three customizations are all about aesthetic customization. Personally, I don't use any of these, but I have a lot of friends who do. So I wanted to share it with you guys in case you guys might wanna customize your Chrome in this manner too. First, we have Tabby Cat. So Tabby Cat, it's actually really cute. So every new tab, it's a different cat, a different background. Girl, if they had a dog version of this, I would be so on it. Sticking with the cat theme, the next extension is Cursor Cat. This one is really cute cute too. Basically, if you turn this on, a little cat will follow you around. You know, sometimes it's just the little things, okay? It's the little things that take away our stress while working. And this one is just really cute and you can change which cat you want to follow you around. And when it starts to get really annoying, it's really easy to turn off. The next is custom cursor for Chrome. So this one actually changes your cursor. So if we click this, click more cursors, there are literally so many to choose from. And I'm pretty sure these are all free or at least most of them are free. I just want to walk through some of the options we have. We have Stranger Things. Not me thinking this was Stranger Things. I am so sorry. I literally thought that was 11. Okay, moving on. Okay, here we have Stranger Things. We have one Vecna. Let's just try to put one on. Let's do a Disney one. Let's do, ooh, maybe Encanto. Okay, we have this one. Oh my gosh, what's her name again? Literally, what is the main character's name? I know there's Isabel, Luisa, Dolores. It's cause she's not in the song. Anyways, look, it literally changed the cursor and it changes if you're about to click something. Now, once you've downloaded all your extensions, you can organize your little extension bar here to make everything more accessible. All you have to do is click this little puzzle piece and then pin the ones that you want to stay in your extension bar. And then once it's there, you can just rearrange it to your heart's content. And since we're already here, let's customize the bookmarks bar. So I really like to maximize the bookmarks bar and just fill it in with all the websites I visit the most. This is my school Chrome profile. That is why I don't have a ton of stuff and it's mainly like school stuff and a little bit of shopping too. So first to add a website to your bookmarks bar, basically just visit the website and then click the lock icon and then drag it to your bookmarks bar. And then what I like to do to save space is to rename it. So just right click edit and then create the new name. I like to change it to a shorter name so that I can save space and also so it looks neater. Now going back to the desktop, let's customize the menu bar, which is this area of your window. There are also so many menu bar apps you can download to really just improve your whole MacBook experience. But here are a few that I have been currently loving. The first is hand mirror. It is a digital hand mirror. So if you click it, you can see what you currently look like. I used to search up photo booth and open that before every video call, but this is so much more efficient because it's literally just one click and you can see how you look, check, and then enter the call. The next app is Noisio. So this is uh, an app that plays ambient sounds. I cannot work in silence. Usually I'll play like instrumental jazz music on my Alexa, but if I'm working with other people or if I'm outside, I like to play ambient music instead. And this is just great for that. So it gives you five free sounds to choose from. Hold on, let's let's play some of them. We have campfire, crickling crackling of the fire, October rain, love a good rain sound, sea waves. Oh, this is kind of intense. This one I don't really get. I feel like this one would just make me want to pee all the time. Sunny day, birds chirping, and my absolute favorite, thunderstorm. 
Very fitting for, for the weather right now. Horo or Horo. And this is just a timer slash alarm that stays in your menu bar because my time management systems are just timers and alarms. I create multiple timers throughout the day. Now for our final two customizations, let's head on over to system preferences. Okay, so two things. First of all, how to customize your login. Every time my friends see my login on my MacBook, they're always like, girl, how did you do that? It's basically my Memoji to achieve the Memoji style. Just click this little icon next to your name, click edit. And there's so many ways to customize it. You can customize your skin tone, customize your hair, your brows, your eyes, head, nose, literally everything, girl. Sky's the limit. Clearly, I enjoyed it a lot because I literally <laughs> made one for each of my family. Lastly is the screen savers. This one is a really cute retro anime clock from Grid Fitty. And shout out to my friend Alexis for this because I saw that she had it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Where'd you get it? And she told me it was Grid Fitty. So I'll have that link below for you guys. And those are all the 20 ways. Actually, I think there were 21. 20, 21 more ways to customize your MacBook. Let me know if you want a part three. I actually don't know if I know any more um, tips and customizations for a part three, but you know, in a few months maybe. Also, let me know how you like to customize your MacBook. If there are any apps or extensions that you love, I'd love to try them out. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My voice is starting to sound like this because I'm actually sick right now. So I think it's just perfect time for us to end this video. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next video, Saturday, 5 p.m. Bye girl.